2D Dynamic Milling, Chaining Part 2. In this video, we will explore the effects that the four remaining chaining options will have on the toolpath. To start, let's chain this feature as a pocket again. Set the strategy to stay inside and turn off any stock extensions. The four remaining chaining options should all be empty. Zero should be specified. Click OK and regenerate this operation, just so we can get a reference of what this toolpath looks like. Make note of where the toolpath starts and how it cuts this pocket. Let's have a look first at the avoidance region's use. On a separate level, level 2, there is some geometry that can be used for the avoidance regions. In this situation, we can assume these are bosses inside of our pockets, which we wish to avoid cutting. Click on the Geometry tab again to open the chaining options. Click the Avoidance Region Selection button, and chain all three circles. Hit OK. Regenerate the operation. Notice the cutting pattern now avoids these areas and that the starting point of the toolpath has also changed. Use avoidance regions to select areas in which you do not want the toolpath to cut. Next, we will look at the containment region's use. Turn the visibility of level 3 on. There is some geometry here that we will use to define the containment region. For this situation, let's say that the cutter broke halfway through the current operation. So instead of running the entire pocket again, we can define a boundary to limit where the tool will cut. Open the chaining options again. Click the containment region selection button and chain the trapezoid. Click OK and regenerate the operation. The toolpath now cuts the machining region, avoids the avoidance regions, and also stays within the defined containment region. Notice again that the start point of the operation has moved. Next, for this hypothetical situation, let's assume that the right wall of the main feature is an open wall and that we can start from outside of this edge. Open the chaining options again by clicking the Geometry tab. We will now define this edge as an air region. Click the Air Region Selection button, switch to a single entity chain, and then select the right edge of the pocket. Click OK and regenerate the operation. The tool will now start from outside of the edge we defined as being an Air Region. First Pass Offset will also affect the toolpath on this Air Region. In the Cut Parameters, Set this value back to 0.00. .00. Regenerate and notice the difference. Lastly, we can have a look at the entry chain's use and its effect on the toolpath. Open the Level Manager and turn on Level 4 and turn off Levels 2 and 3. Next, on the Chaining options, clear the selections for Avoidance, Air, and Containment regions. Regenerate this path. We are now back to the original toolpath. Notice the starting point over on the left side. For this situation, we can assume that a hole has been drilled at the location of the point in the upper left hand corner of the pocket. It would make more sense to start the toolpath from a point where the hole has been drilled. This point can be defined as an entry chain, but before it will be accepted, a change needs to be made to the Operations Parameters. Click the Parameters tab. Once open, switch to Entry Motion page. Not only does this page contain the setting for Entry Motion, but the chain can be set from here as well. Chaining from here is the same as chaining from the Chaining Options menu. Ensure that the Entry type is set to Helix Only. Enable the Center Helix on Point Radio button Set the helix radius to 0, and then click the Chain Selection button. When selecting geometry from the Entry Motion page, you may be launched into the Chain Manager menu first. If so, 
Right-click in the Chain Manager's window and choose Add Chain. This now takes you to the chaining menu where geometry selection can begin. Switch the chaining mode to Point and select the point in the upper left corner. Click OK and regen the operation. The toolpath now plunges at the selected point to start the toolpath. If there is no hole to plunge into, we may wish to perform a helical motion to cut down the starting depth. Open Entry Motion page again. This time, specify a radius for the helix of 0.5 inches. Regenerate and notice the tool motion on Entry now. You may need to skew the part to get a good look at the helical motion. Not only can an entry be done with a point, geometry can be chained to define a path for a tool to follow during this entry motion. Back on the Entry Motion page, change the entry method to Custom Use Entry Chain. Clear the currently selected point from the chain geometry, and then select Chain on the lower right side of the pocket. Enter 0.2 into the additional slot width field. Hit OK and rebuild the operation. Check the motion of this entry. It follows the selected chain, offsetting 200 thou around it, and ramps to the cutting depth. This completes coverage of the wireframe chaining options for 2D dynamic milling. In the next video, we will explore the solid chaining method and we will start to look at some of the parameters inside of the 2D dynamic toolpath as well.